Welcome back to Craft Stick Crafts. I'm Brad Griffith and I'm going to show you how to make a adjustable catapult. This particular one might look like a crossbow. We're trying to incorporate a crossbow in it as well but that's going to be at a later show and tell. So to start with it's already firing. To uh, start with I'll go over the supplies. You're going to need some paint stir sticks. And not all paint stir sticks are alike. Uh, here's Sherwin Williams, here's Do It Best, here's Home Depot. All the hardware stores kind of have their own brand. Like this particular one here happens to be a Home Depot one and it cracked several times and other Home Depot sticks have not cracked. Uh, here's a rod of paint one and it cracked on the first attempt. So you know it's not a perfect science but we want to at least uh, get as many different assortments if possible because you're going to need them especially if you're trying to teach this to kids. So uh, we're going to need some clamps. These are just uh, like a four inch clamp. These are Husky. Uh, we find these at Home Depot. You're going to need some big clamps. These are like a five inch clamp, a good man clamp. These will be a little difficult to pinch, but I'll show you how to do that. You're going to need like a spatula or a good metal ladle. And if you've seen our other DVDs, that is how we shape the, uh, the catapult arm. I'll get into that, back into that in a second. First thing you want to do is you want to soak some paint stir sticks. A uh, good 24 hours. Just uh, they don't fit in any kind of pan that you have. We just uh, run a little bit of water in the tub. We also use this as a adjustable uh, paint um, roller arm. So you would put the uh, the handle of the long paint handle in through here, and then the paint roller would go here. But what we like to do with it, we with this adjustable arm we can control how much we choose to bend the the stick the um, the paint stir sticks and what we're going to do is we're going to create two of these right angle bends and the ones we're going to show you aren't maybe quite as right angle as these uh, these right angle bends take a little bit more show and tell that I, I don't have the, the time and the setup to show you. But they're, they're possible. So after soaking your paint stir stick overnight and you grab this arm, adjustable arm, you put there on there like that. Excuse me. And we also get, grabbed a belt and so you have the belt on top of the paint stir stick and then you attach it with the big clamp here like that and then you can draw the paint stir stick to you gotta undo the connection there you can draw that to you to the angle you want to create Tighten it up. Sometimes we bend it a little bit beyond the angle that you want. In this case, I didn't go far enough. And sometimes what happens is when it dries, it kind of springs back to, you know, springs back a little bit of a degree. So this adjustable arm allows you to uh, make, this is kind of a, a slow curve, not necessarily a sharp right angle like the other ones I showed you, but uh, you want to make two of those for these right angle base 
So you could build one going that way and one going this way if you're trying to produce this crossbow catapult. So there is going to be a little bit of splitting going on. <clears throat> if you happen to hear a little snapping, cracking, and popping, that's okay because when you glue your front piece on there, any snapping, cracking, and popping will be supported stronger with the front part of the, uh, the crossbow. So with the next um, coffee, uh, not coffee stir stick, with the next paint stir stick and the spatula, what you want to do, this one's all dry, usually when I put them on there, I put them in front of a house fan or the house register. And then when I come home at night, it's dry. So what we want to do is we want to clamp paint stir stick on the spatula and then push it down into that space right there. Line it up with the handle. So each spatula is a little different. Yours may not be like mine. But what we're doing is we're creating the shape of the catapult arm. One is a spatula and the other one is a big ladle spoon. So you're stressing the wood, you're telling the wood to bend like a spatula or so that you have uh, more adjustments in where the marbles go which is one of the other supplies so this one here was shaped around a ladle so that's going to give you two distinct different catapult arms with the first set of right angles pieces that I showed you how to make. One is one side of the arm and the other one is the other side of the arm and we connect it here in the middle with another paint stir stick. You can see that. Get rid of the assembly. So one of the interesting things we decided to do at the last minute was by cutting the angles at different spots and at different angles. Show you here, put that back together. So what we did is we took a paint stir stick and we cut one at like 45 and 90 and straight up and down, whoops, sorry, 45, 90, straight up and down and uh, made little um, little slots for each one. So not only can you adjust what kind of catapult arm you use, whether it's the ladle or the um, spatula, you can also put it in different slots. So this slot might get you a different distance than this one coming down farther here then this one here is straight up and down. This one here is even back farther. So if you're teaching uh, physics to kids, this is a great way to show them uh, uh, different distances based on angles and based on different types of wood, would shoot farther. And uh, other videos on my catapults, I've shown how to, you know, usually just glue the lid to the catapult arm using hot glue. Uh, these are lids. This is a just a, like a tongue depressor we we bent for that one. In my new videos, what we do is we take a little bigger lid. We cut a slot in it so the clip can go in there 
and then you can clip the lid which then holds the marbles to the catapult arm and then the advantage of that is because this now is adjustable and I skipped a step you know when I cut these I drew the lines out and labeled them so that I couldn't get mixed up on which is which and then we glued them to that right angle piece that we made with enough distance to put our um, our arms in there so what we've got is uh, two different kinds of arms uh, five one two three four excuse me four different locations to put the arms and then we can adjust what what part of the arm we want to use so for instance this is the spatula and we can put it this way and put the lid up here we can put it this way and put the lid on the back side we could flip it over and put the lid here we could turn it around and put the lid there and that's true for the spoon ladle in the many different uh, locations so the kids can be even more clever with physics and how far things are going <clears throat> and it might be helpful if I hold this bottom piece so what we have here in the background uh, this was for the smaller catapults I made so that we would have a place to fire the catapults instead of firing them at ourselves at other students or at the wall or like I did the light above me so we made a cardboard back which misses sometimes but the goal here is you get certain points for hitting the cardboard and the ball going down into the box and a certain amount of points for the ball coming back out on the table and you can you know it's a little better than shooting each other so this was one we actually added wheels to and you can see the spoon shape here This is a siege tower and catapult. With a trigger mechanism. Which works sometimes. This is one that we made where the base here is adjustable. It could slide over this way or that way so lots of marbles around my place on the floor since I've been doing these that's probably my best one there because it's got two um, tongue depressors it seems like it has the best force so um, I hope I didn't skip any steps, uh, paint stir sticks, some um, ladles, a good um, uh, spatula where you can, you know, bend the paint stir stick around. In this particular video, the advantage of this one is you've got two different shaped arms. You can adjust where the lid goes. Your kids can learn different aspects of physics based on the kinds of wood. The, uh, you can see the different shapes they'll produce. And then on top of all that, you can adjust where the arm goes uh, based on just desire and how far you want to shoot it. 
So this particular one we possibly, excuse me, might work into some kind of a crossbow coming through here. But right now we're, we're dealing with it as a catapult. That one went way over there. So I hope these have been helpful. Uh, this one here was one we've enjoyed. We actually attached it to a little truck. So if you have any questions, you can find me at craftstickbending.com or craftstickcrafts.com. And you're probably watching this on my YouTube channel, uh, Craft Stick Crafts. Once again, uh, if there does do some snapping, cracking, and popping, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, that'll be reinforced later. And the, uh, the leather belt helps it from doing any, uh, if it does snap and crack, excuse me, I'm going to wrestle this thing. There we go. If it does do some splintering, snapping, or cracking, the belt helps hold that all together until it dries. And then when it does dry, there's still quite a bit of strength in there. So uh, I hope that was clear. Uh, you'll more than likely need some Elmer's glue, something to write with, something to cut with. Those are some basics things. Um, there's also a tutorial out there, a little marketing going on on how I made this Valentine's heart. And you would probably type in craft stick, crafts, Valentine's heart, something like that. Thank you.